Previously, we defined the sum of two matrices in the simplest, most natural way that we could, simply by adding corresponding elements. It would be possible to invent a matrix multiplication that worked similarly, just by multiplying element by element. One times five is five. Two times six is 12, and so on but we're not gonna do matrix multiplication this way. The standard definition of matrix multiplication, the topic of this video, is more complicated. It's also much more useful. So one reason that we want to define matrix multiplication in this more, more complicated way is that when we use matrices to represent transformations or changes in a system, then applying two transformations, one after the other, will exactly correspond to multiplying two matrices in the way that I'm going to show you. And this will allow us to use matrix arithmetic to model complex systems over time. So before we define multiplication for general matrices, I want to start with very special matrices called vectors. A matrix that has only one column is called a column vector. So this is an example of a column vector. It has four entries, all in one column. So as a matrix, it's a four by one matrix. And in general, a column vector is an n by one matrix for some number n. A matrix that has only one row is called a row vector. Here is an example of a row vector. It's a length four row vector, or in other words, a one by four matrix. And in general, a row vector is the same thing as a one by n matrix for some number n. I'm going to show you how to multiply a one by n row vector with an n by one column vector, first with this example. To multiply this one by four row vector with this four by one column vector, we multiply the first entry of the row vector with the first entry of the column vector, the second entry with the second entry, and so on, and then we add those products up. So we're going to do 3 times 1 plus 6 times negative 2 plus 1 times 3 plus negative 1 times 5, which adds up to negative 11. Sometimes I like to visualize this as tipping the row vector on its end and then multiplying numbers at the same height with the column vector and adding them up. Let's write this multiplication process as an abstract formula. Let's write our row vector, say w, and write out its entries, w1, w2, w3, all the way through wn. And then let's write our column vector v with entries v1, v2, v3, all the way through vn. To perform the multiplication of these two vectors, w times v, we multiply w1 times v1, add that to w2 times v2 plus w3 times v3, and so on, all the way up to the last product, wn times vn. We add up all those terms. If you're familiar with summation notation written with this big letter sigma, this can be written as the sum of wi times vi, where i starts at 1 and goes through n. Notice that we've only defined multiplication for a 1 by n row vector times an n by 1 column vector. It wouldn't make sense to multiply a row vector and column vector with different number of entries because the entries wouldn't line up the way we're using them. It would be possible to define multiplying a column vector times a row vector in that order. There are a couple ways to define this, one of which may surprise you. But for now, we're going to stick with multiplying row vectors times column vectors in that order because that's what we need to define more general matrix multiplication. So now let's define matrix multiplication in general. Let's suppose that A is an M by R matrix and B is an R by N matrix. Then the product A times B is an M by N matrix and the entry in row i and column j is given by the product 
of row I of A and column J of B. Notice that a row of A is a 1 by R row vector, and a column of B is an R by 1 column vector. So this is just the kind of vector product that we defined on the previous page. I want to emphasize that when we're multiplying two matrices, A times B in that order, then the number of columns of A needs to equal the number of rows of B. That's the only way that the elements will line up when we're doing our vector product, and the only way that the matrix multiplication will make sense. Let's look at an example where A is this 4 by 2 matrix, and B is this 2 by 3 matrix. Notice that the number of columns of A is equal to the number of rows of B, so it makes sense to compute A times B in that order, even though it wouldn't make sense to compute B times A. Suppose we want to compute the product A times B, I'll call that matrix C, and suppose we want to just find like the entry in the second row and the third column. So I could call that C23. To do that, we need to take the second row of A, so that's 1, negative 5, and multiply it by the third column of B, so that's 6, 3, and we do our vector product, 1 times 6 plus negative 5 times 3, so that's 6 minus 15, which is negative 9. So C is going to be a 4 by 3 matrix, and its entry in the second row and third column is going to be a negative 9. But in practice, we're not just going to want to compute one random entry of our product matrix. We want to compute all its entries. So let's do this in a systematic way, starting with the first row and the first column of B to get the entry in the 1-1 one, one position. Let me rewrite my matrices down here, and I'll leave space for my 4 by 3 product matrix. So now for my entry in the top left position, the first row and the first column, I'm going to take the first row of A and multiply it by the first column of B. 2 times 4 plus 3 times 1, that's 8 plus 3, which is 11. Now Let's get the next entry in the first row and the second column. So that's going to be the first row of A and the second column of B. So we'll take 2 times 3 plus 3 times negative 2. That's 6 minus 6, or 0. Moving right along to get the entry here, I'm going to need the first row of A and the third column of B. So that's 2 times 6 plus 3 times 3, which is 12 plus 9, or 21. Now I'm ready to move on to the next row of the product. So that's the second row, first column position. So that'll be the second row of A times the first column of B. We have 1 times 4 plus minus 5 times 1, so that's 4 minus 5 or negative 1. Continuing like this, for the next entry, we'll take the second row times the second column. So that's 1 times 3 plus negative 5 times negative 2. 3 plus 10 is 13. And the second row times the third column gives us 1 times 6 plus negative 5 times 3. So that's 6 minus 15, which is negative 9. That's the one we calculated before. The last two rows are similar. For the third row, I need to take for the third row of the product, I need to take the third row of A and multiply it by each column in turn. 0 times 4 plus 7 times 1 is 7. 0 times 3 plus 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. 0 times 6 plus 7 times 3 is 21. Finally, we get the fourth and last row of the product by multiplying the fourth row of A 
by each column of b in turn. And that works out to negative 3, negative 5, negative 3. And we have our matrix product. Please pause the video and calculate for yourself the product y times z and then the product z times y. Notice that in this case, we can do the product in either order since each of these is a two by two matrix. So their inner dimensions agree no matter which order you do the product in. So when calculating y times z, we're gonna get the matrix as multiplied in this order. And the result should be 44, 28, 11, and 31. The 44 comes from, multi from multiplying the first row of y with the first column of z. 1 times negative 1 plus 5 times 9, that's minus 1 plus 45, or 44. Multiplying the first row by the second column gives us the 28. The second row by the first column gives us 11. And the second row by the second column, 7 times 3 plus 2 times 5 is 31. Let's see what happens when we multiply in the opposite order, z times y. This time we get 20, 1, 44, and 55 a completely different matrix. Even the one number in common is just a coincidence. This example shows us that multiplication of matrices is not commutative. Y times Z is not necessarily equal to Z times Y. In a future video, we'll look at properties of matrix multiplication more thoroughly and figure out what properties do hold. In this video, we defined matrix multiplication by multiplying rows times columns. And we noted that matrix multiplication is not, in general, commutative.